Hello YouTube, I'm Pilot Stud and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator news video. Today I'll be updating you on the Fly the Mad Dog X MD80, the Phoenix A320 and the DC Designs Concorde. Three awesome payware aircraft that will hopefully be in the simulator in the not so distant future. If you like these kind of videos, and I know you do, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. It really does help me out. As I'm sure you understand, it takes a lot of work to keep my eye on all of the upcoming Microsoft Flight Simulator freeware and payware aircraft, as well as other stuff, so your support is always very much appreciated. But without further delay, let's get right into this video. So I'll correct myself from the intro there, Fly the Mad Dog X is not its name anymore, that was for the Flight Simulator X version. Leonardo Softhouse is the developer with their Fly the Mad Dog, their MD-80 of course. Well they've released a 6 minute video in beautiful 4K on YouTube of them landing the MD-80 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't think they actually call it that officially because of copyright, but hey, it looks absolutely awesome. Now, this is showing a really well-made aircraft, as you'd expect with Leonardo Softhouse. They've got a really good history, really good background. And although, of course, it's not finished, and it's certainly not perfect, there's a few issues people have been picking up upon from the video. Yes, it is certainly impressive. All of you that have said we would not be getting a study level airliner in Microsoft Flight Simulator need to go and watch this six minute video. Of course, I've got it on 1080p running in the background right now, but you're not experiencing the full glory, so go check it out. Uh, link is in the description. Now, what sticks out to me is the autopilot working. That, by the looks of it, includes uh, their version version of VNAV to a certain degree and of course the very well detailed instruments they look really good. Negatively what sticks out to me is that the aircraft seems to sway quite a bit by landing so I think they need to tweak the flight model but that might just be how the aircraft performs in real life and of course they're not showing us wind conditions so they might just be over correcting there and it might not actually be a problem. Of course, the MD-80 being an older aircraft means it's got some, I'd say, unconventional systems that your simmer nowadays will take a bit of time getting used to. It's certainly not your bog standard A320 or 787. There's a lot of practice that needs to go into it. And when it's study level like this, it's going to take time to learn and get used to. Before anyone rushes into buying it, and of course it's not out yet, you will want to factor that into account. But the sounds are beautiful, of course, seeing as the uh, the engines are on the rear of the aircraft, it's a really quiet cockpit. I really like that, I've got to be honest. 6 minutes 33 seconds of pure bliss on their YouTube channel. I've put a link in the description, it's absolutely stunning, I've got to be honest. As I said, the only thing that seems to be a bit off for me is the final few moments in landing, it seems to be swaying quite a bit there and of course um, a bit of an interesting float down the runway. As you can see they are testing around with autopilot as well so just go check the video out guys, it's really worth the 6 minutes time, it's really beautiful and something that also sticks out to me is that you've got a first officer speaking through stuff you need to do like reverse thrusters and that that's, we've seen it before but that always shows a really good aircraft. Moving over to another awesome payware bit of kit that we haven't got yet, but it's looking like it's getting there. Phoenix A320CO, standing for current engine option. After a bit of a break on their Discord, we finally got an update and I'll be going off their news article on their website, phoenixsim.com. They've got a beautiful EFB standing for electronic flight bag now in the airplane. Now for those of you familiar with, with the Flybo Wire A320, you'll know what I mean by an EFB. It's basically um, an iPad that contains uh, flight plans, approach plates, stuff like that in the real aircraft and you can also do calculations with it in real life. But in Microsoft Flight Simulator it's so much more, allowing you to customise many different parts of the aircraft. And by the looks of it, the Phoenix Sim version is no different. Now, going off the article, uh, they say they will refrain from making promises about whether or not this is something they will include at launch as initially they intended to make this available as a post-launch update, but by the looks of it, it's progressing pretty well. Now, it looks better uh, than the fly -by wire one, but of course, this is a payware product, so you'd expect it to be, not to discredit fly -by wire at all. 
but there's just a few more features that set this apart. For example, they state that they've accurately modelled um, your, your iPad charging and the battery does run out. Certainly interesting, and it says so you've got to remember to keep your tablet plugged in and uh, on charge basically. It's that kind of detail that really sticks out. And you can customise the background of your iPad. It's pretty impressive, let's be real. They state that takeoff and landing performance calculations are currently undergoing development, so you will not be left without them in the EFB, they should be in there. And you may be able to retrieve some sort of MCDU data in there or ATSU data in there allowing you to pull out your performance data. Now also, you'll be able to use a real iPad, tablet, whatever you use in coordination with this. You'll be able to pop out the screen and move it onto your iPad. I don't know how, they say you should be able to do it and it should be good quality. It is possible um, with the fly by wire one in a certain way, I believe, although it's not perfect, it requires a bit of software. I think you can do it though, but don't hold me to it. But the Phoenix Sim team say you'll be able to use this on your real tablet or of course any other a PC hooked up on a local area network. So if you've got a big setup, a big A320 setup, my goodness, it's just going to get a little bit more realistic. Quite cool stuff, I have to admit. Also, anticipating Sim Update 6, which is coming out very soon, which is going to be a massive bug fix update by the looks of it. They're now polishing out the final few intricacies with the flight model on the A320 but of course until Sim Update 6 comes out they can't guarantee anything. Hopefully it means they'll be releasing this aircraft between Sim Update 6 and Sim Update 7 by the sounds of it that's the plan but of course don't hold me to it, it's just how they're talking about Sim Update 6 makes me feel like that. Sorting out the flight model also means sorting around with the auto flight model which is autopilot to you and me. Now something the fly-by-wire A320 does not have yet is true VNAV. Of course the Phoenix Sim A320 does have true VNAV and it is incredibly accurate. They use Volanta to showcase it following a flight path and my goodness is it very good. And finally, the visual team have been working on refining the PBR textures and weathering textures. And yes, I mean it just looks fantastic, honestly, beautiful. I wouldn't mind paying a good amount of money for this and they say it's going to be quite affordable so keep an eye out for it but it does look absolutely beautiful. I know a lot of you are like why would we need this uh, when we've got the fly by wire A320 but I've got to be honest for many people out there this will certainly be worth the investment. Phoenix Sim keep it up. Now moving over to our final aircraft in today's video we move over to the DC Designs Concorde which is not going to be study level because of course that would be very difficult to fly but hopefully it won't be so far off and it will certainly be a pleasure by the looks of it. Now on the 8th of October every Friday I should say that last one was on the 8th of October they released their Friday news update bringing you up to date with all of DC Designs news. We're going to stick around with Concord but if you want to go read it uh, the links in the description. This week has focused more on the external textures of Concorde, bringing it up from what used to be their P3D model to their Microsoft Flight Simulator model. And yes, it looks awesome. They've done a really good job here. There's a few places that seem like they need a little bit of work, but that could just be um, Facebook ruining it. So that stands out to me. That would be the leading edge of the wing. It looks a bit too straight for me. Maybe it's like that in real life, but it looks a bit jolted, a bit jagged. Who knows, maybe they're still working on it, but as you can see there, we've got some interesting pixelation at the end. I do reckon that's Facebook, but I'm just looking at it really meticulously at this point. All of the rivets are in there, and yes, they are individual, they're not just painted over textures, so that's a big plus. The engines look decent, although again, we're getting that sort of issue at the back of there with the pixelation. It needs a bit of work at the back of the engine, in my opinion but it's certainly getting there and once again reflections are looking awesome gears are looking very good only thing by the looks of it they're kind of cutting into the ground so they'll probably want to sort that one out but once again it's small bugs like this that can easily be ironed out hopefully before Christmas which is when they're aiming to release it by it's a bit too shiny but it's getting there they'll be working on it I'm sure it's a big step up from the previous update and it's certainly getting there but clearly there's a lot more work and that's why it's not released yet, it's still in development so just bear that in mind. You can see the clear progress on here now, the aircraft is looking more realistic, less overtly shiny, less P3D like 
more Microsoft Flight Simulator standard. I wish DC Designs every bit of luck with it. I'll leave you with this one. It looks absolutely beautiful. A bit of work needs doing, of course, as I've said and as I've pointed out. I'm not going to say this is perfect. But since the last few screenshots and the last update, certainly progress has been there and progress for the better. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts down below. Of course, we're all very excited for a Concorde. Who wouldn't be? She's a beauty. Anyway, guys, for me today, that is all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned something. I hope you're excited for one of these aircraft. There's a lot to talk about, as always. So I'd love to keep you all up to date. But for me today, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It means a lot. Thank you to my first class channel members. You can shout out on the screen now. It means so, so much. Thank you to Fanai, Leibenberg, Hello, Owen K, Captain Matt Russell, Jesse Wiseman, Ethan Bubeck, and Simon Schmidt. You guys really do help me out. Thank you so much. You get a shout out on the screen now. But for me today, that is all. I'll see you around. Bye bye.